Brain research is often associated with labs in Boston or Seattle. But in Chennai, something remarkable is unfolding. Not many know this, but IIT Madras is quietly challenging global neuroscience norms in cost, scale and ambition. I'm going to tell you all about it on this episode of Point Break. Last December, IIT Madras publicly released over 5,000 ultra-detailed fetal brain images taken at one micron resolution, 10 times sharper than benchmarks from the Allen Institute in Seattle, and all at about one-tenth the cost. I'll tell you all about it, but first, a quick roundup of what's making the waves in the world of tech. The $500 billion Stargate AI Mega project, led by OpenAI's Sam Altman and SoftBank's Masayoshi Son, is beginning to look more like sci-fi than reality. Tooted as a nationwide hyperscale data center built out to fuel America's AI dominance, the venture hasn't secured a single deal yet. In fact, Oracle CEO Safra Katz recently admitted that Stargate hasn't even officially formed. The Wall Street Journal now reports the project's scope has shrunk dramatically with plans for just one modest facility in Ohio by year-end. Tensions are reportedly brewing between SoftBank and OpenAI, particularly over data center locations linked to SB Energy, a SoftBank-backed energy arm. The Stargate dream may be dimming, but the AI race is far from over. And AI just outperforms some of the brightest young minds on Earth. Google DeepMind's Gemini, in its advanced deep think mode, has officially earned a gold medal score at the International Mathematical Olympiad, solving live out of six notoriously difficult problems within the same time limit as human contestants. Unlike last year's approach that relied on formal logic tools and days of computation, the new Gemini model solved problems directly in natural language within four and a half hours. It explored multiple solution paths in parallel, producing clear and accurate proofs. DeepMind says it will soon share the model with select mathematicians before a broader release. Elon Musk's XAI is making an unexpected move, introducing Baby Grok, a kid-friendly version of its Grok chatbot. Announced via Musk's post on X, the app is meant to deliver child-safe content, drawing inspiration from Marvel's Baby Groot. The shift follows criticism over Grok's earlier AI companions, including an anime-style bot that users claimed shared flirtatious and suggestive content even in kids' mode. While the idea of baby Grok has received support from parents, XAI hasn't shared specifics around launch dates or safety controls. Is this a real step to a child-safe AI or just a quick rebrand? Either way, all eyes are on how XAI follows through. Union Minister Ashwini Vaishnav revealed that the country's electronics exports have jumped eight-fold in just 11 years, crossing the $40 billion mark, a pace of growth rarely seen at this scale. Domestic production has surged six times in the same period, putting India firmly on the global electronics manufacturing map. Speaking at IIT Hyderabad's convocation, Vaishnav also pointed to what's next. India's first commercial-scale semiconductor chip is expected to roll out this year. With growing investments in capital equipment and materials, he projected India would soon rank among the world's top five semiconductor powerhouses. As India sharpens its focus on becoming a global hub for electronics and semiconductors, another quiet revolution is taking shape, this time in the realm of neuroscience and AI. Let's get into it. You know, I believe that in the next 10 years, probably, we will have drugs for Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, cancer, especially with AI coming in and helping in drug discovery, we will be able to, and in diagnostics, we'll be able to uh, solve some of the challenging problems facing humanity. I have personally worked in this area and demonstrated, this is what gives me the confidence to say that we can do world-class things here. This is the... Uh, brain center at IIT Madras, they have done something which 
the entire world is now looking up to. The 5,000 ultra-detailed fetal brain images form the backbone of Dharani, a digital atlas that stitches slices thinner than a strand of hair into 3D reconstructions. It's a data set that could redefine how we study early brain development and its open access. The work done by IIT Madras isn't just academic, it's already being used to enhance MRI protocols, aid surgeons, and seek early signs of Alzheimer's or Parkinson's. The university isn't stopping with five brains. The center has 200 more specimens preserved and plans to image 100 brains in two to three years. At that scale, this could become the world's most comprehensive brain imaging effort. The global neuroscience market is projected at around 36 to 39 billion dollars today, expected to grow at 4 to 6 percent annually, reaching over 47 billion dollars by 2032 and potentially up to 52 billion dollars by 2030. Asia Pacific, including India, is the fastest growing region, but even so, most brain imaging investments come from North America. IIT Madras is aiming to produce cost-efficient, top-tier neuroscience directly challenging the traditional global funding patterns. However, the road is far from smooth. Histological brain imaging is complex and demanding. Tissue can shrink or degrade during slicing. High-resolution microscopy must handle petabytes of data per brain and processing that requires advanced computing infrastructure. India also faces structural hurdles. Neuroscience in Indian universities remains fragmented. Medical and technical branches rarely collaborate. Clinicians are overstretched, slowing down research. Few universities offer dedicated neuroscience degrees. On a global scale, major challenges include the need for big science teams working across disciplines, creation of interoperable data sets across species and scales, specialized hardware and software to simulate brain function, managing public support and ethical concerns around brain data PMC. Why pursue this here? Chris Gopalakrishnan believes India has three advantages cost efficiency, abundant STEM talent, and a shifting focus to outcome-driven science. The Sudha Gopalakrishnan Brain Center was co-founded in 2022 for this purpose. The Center for Computational Brain Research, launched by Chris in 2015, combines neuroscience and AI. India has already shown it can scale complex digital systems. Aadhaar and UPI are prime examples. Brain science is the next frontier with potential global applications in medicine and AI. Still structural gaps need fixing. Public funding is limited. Collaboration between engineering, medicine, policy and ethics must improve. To sustain progress, India must build large teams, cross-disciplinary partnerships and global alliances. When I Product comes from a developed economy, it's targeted towards 1 billion people in the world. When a product comes from India, it's targeted towards 8 billion people in the world because we are a lower cost economy. And if it has to sell in India, it must be affordable. And so this product then can go to Africa, can go to emerging economies, developed, developing economies, etc. In a vaccine itself, the vaccine from the US for COVID, was $20 per dose. From India, it was $3 per dose. So India became the vaccine capital for the world. Right? So that's the reason why we need India to be a product economy. Um, then diversity of perspectives, more people working on the problem, the problem gets solved faster. This is what I tell all philanthropies now, global philanthropies. If you're spending $5 outside the country, spend $1 in India we will double the research output. So you are actually making your money, your dollar go much longer or much more impactful by doing work with Indian academia, Indian research institutions, etc. Slowly, the philanthropies are starting to understand and they are now collaborating with Indian research ecosystems. We want to do collaborative research India now hosts the world's largest high-res collection of fetal brain images, 
10x better and cheaper than anything before. And IIT Madras is just getting started, collaborating globally and sharing data openly. Turning this into real-world impact will take more than good research. It needs infrastructure, talent and scale. But it shows what's possible when science is built for 8 billion people. That's all we have for this episode of Point Break. I'll be back with more such groundbreaking updates. Until then, stay sharp, stay curious, and think AI, think AIM.